Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Skill RPA. Today we are going to discuss. In this session, we are going to discuss uh, how we can, how we are going to prepare uh, the uh, process definition document or PDD. So this is the template which we are going to use uh, uh, for uh, preparing the process definition document or a PZ, uh, process design document PDD, and uh, let, let us start uh, preparing this document and uh, let me just try to uh, rename this. Uh, just give me a moment. Uh, and this process name is like supply chain management. So let me just rename it to supply chain management automation. Yeah. Now it was got renamed to supply chain management automation PDD document. And uh, this is the template which I have taken from our UiPath uh, website, or like this is standard format, like generally everyone will be following. Um, and even by uh, many of the UiPath folks as well. And um, let us see like how we can start defining our uh, PDD uh, with the help of this template. So, um, like uh, after this, like we'll be writing uh, the process name. So uh, the process name is uh, supply chain management. And uh, you can just uh, try to add like uh, the uh, company logo or something. And uh, let me do one thing like uh, we have this uh, company name as pragmatic procurement uh, solutions. So let me do one thing. Let me take a skipping tool and capture uh, this just for uh, time, time being. And now we got this. And let us put that here. Yeah. So now uh, what we are just stating in the base one is like uh, pragmatic solutions, process definition document for supply chain management. And uh, the second page will be the table of contents and let us get into uh, what actually. See the process definition document, definition document outlines the business process chosen for the automation using UiPath. So um, we you see there is nothing to change in this. This will uh, give us the uh, uh, like uh, what actually uh, the purpose of this document like PDD, uh, what is the requirement of we, why we are creating this PDD. And uh, actually this uh, high level, uh, we can say it will help us um, help the developers uh, like how uh, the as is flow and what needs to be done. So it will give a high level idea to a developer. And uh, the objective uh, in the objectives, like we just need to do some modification. So I just kept everything like this and I'll share the same uh, template with you as well in the shared drive. And so that like you can just edit from here. So we just need to put the process name here. Supply chain management and uh, it is conducted within the company and the company is, uh, let me see, it is pragmatic uh, procurement solutions. And the department name is procurement department or like we can say purchase department. So let me write it to purchase. And these are like uh, general uh, advantages of like uh, RPA, like uh, giving some uh, better uh, accuracy or uh, faster delivery or uh, reducing the manual efforts and all. And we just need to mention the key people over here. And let me, yeah. So like SME is nothing but like who is giving us the walkthrough. 
and uh, reviewer is like who is going to review this document or like the user uh, use case uh, test cases and the process owner is nothing but like he's like point of point of contact for all the escalations or like in case if the project is getting delayed we just need to update him and uh, he is the person who is uh, ultimate authority to uh, approve move the pro uh, approve uh, for uh, production movement or production deployment <laughs> Uh, generally it will be like the manager of that particular team or a department for whom we are doing the automations and minimal requirement prerequisites for automation like in case if you have something more we can just put that like generally the basic things are like we just need to or robot need to have an access to all the applications which we are going on which we are going to do the automations and at the same time we need to have a bot accounts or bot uh, particular rpl licenses and uh, we just need to have uh, this uh, process design document and we need we also need to have a test data for uh, uh, automation of our uh, like uh, for the testing of our uh, automation which we developed and uh, we need to provide the process overview like the process full name is um, supply chain management and the process area is uh, let me do one thing let me take this whole table data and put automatic color okay yeah and the process area is purchasing department sorry oh process area is procurement yeah it will come under procurement and the department will be the purchase department and uh, the process short description uh it's nothing but like uh, we just uh, trying to uh, like if you if you go if you are uh, if you just already checked our requirement walkthrough it is nothing but like we just need to check for this po numbers in the purchase order tracking and we need to get um, the ship date order total and uh, we just need to get the as a name based on the state so let us write uh, this description uh, like uh, for each PO number on supply chain management application we need to get ship date order total and isn't name based on state and enter the details back into supply chain management application so this is our uh, in short description it is and roles required for the performing performing of this process read access to procurement anywhere application and uh, for uh, supply chain management we doesn't require any login and we just need to have a login to this application with the help of these credentials uh, and we just need to have a read access for this application and the process schedule and frequency will just uh, initially will be keeping that to be tbd because it depends on the requirement and uh, the business pro uh, process uh, owner or like the business team will let us know at what time we need to schedule it and items process or uh, for reference period like uh, as is now uh, like uh, in existing like when the human is doing that how many processes we are getting for a day or a per month or per year that volume we are going to uh, define so let me write this volume for 
पर्टिकुलर पीरियड will be getting this from business how is handling free like how is handling like to process one particular uh, item uh, how much time it is going to take so this is also we are going to get it from the business and even this is also from the business and peak period we need to, we'll be getting it from the business like at what particular time we have a high volume or uh, that we call it as a peak periods and uh, transaction volume during a uh, peak period even this also will get like during the peak period how many transactions we are going to get and the total fts are supporting this activity which means like how many full time employees are supporting this like uh, we can consider like uh, if the work activity is for 8 hours then we we'll consider it to be 1 fte and even this also will get it from the business expected increase of volume in the next reference period like let us suppose we have taken uh, some uh, last one year of data in order to give like uh, for the point number 7 items processed for the reference period and then we need to define like the, the expectation for the next one year even this also will be getting it from the business and the level of exception rate like when uh, the user uh, users are trying to process any uh, transactions like uh, uh, how many are like uh, going into the business rule exception like uh, for some invalid data or like uh, in this case probably the po number might not be available under this purchase order tracking so that also we are going to get it from the business and input data um there is no particular input data for this process but we can say um po numbers from supply chain management is our input for this process output is nothing but entering information into supply chain management from procurement anywhere application so this is our basic thing so let me just change the formatting of this yeah now it's done and what are the applications we are going to use on this and uh, here uh, we are going to use the supply chain management application and uh, we are going to use a uh, procurement anywhere application so let us write these two applications because we need to fill out uh, the applications and let me try supply chain management and this is the system language both are english and it's a thin client or a thick client so first let us understand what is the difference between the thick client and a thin client so uh, thick client or thin client thin client is something that like which is running on a server and the whole data is stored on the server and uh, it's a very lightweight application on uh, our machine and uh, which is interacting with the server for all the other um, uh, processing of uh, any uh, data or something but the thick client is something that which is running on our machine and it's very limitedly dependent on the servers and all the data is stored locally and when it comes to the supply chain management and procurement and around anywhere these two are uh, like web applications where we have a server so this will come under a uh, thin client let me just save it here and environment or accessing web browser
let me just have this okay and now uh, we need to provide the as is process map here because um, uh, so we just need to showcase like how as is uh, process looks like so we just need to go provide the process name here and the name is a uh, supply chain management as is process and we just need to provide the uh, as is process here and we already created if you remember in the previous sessions we created the as is pro process flow we just need to go to file and we need to export as uh, jpg and export to the device so we got uh, it we got it got downloaded so yeah this is the flow and just need to copy this and let it put it back here in this yeah here is our uh as is process flow and now uh we need to define uh the as is process steps like detailed steps along with the screenshots and the action needs to be taken and is there any possibility of exception in case uh, if the exception occurs, how we are going to handle it. Before getting into that, let me uh, go to to be process flow and here let us put the to be uh, process map as well. And uh, let us come here. This is for the to be process flow, which we created in the previous sessions and let us export it to JPG and uh, let us save it to the local drive and let me refresh this. Oh, I am not getting any refresh option here. Let me just do this. Yeah, to be process. Now I got it and we'll be putting it here. Yeah. So now we imported both our as is and to be processes, and we just need to provide the detail steps here and we need to provide the input data description. Uh, let me just put one and the input one. Okay. Yeah. So let me change the format for all this to automatic and the input number is type is P1 number, location on web application, standard input, yes. Inputs are structured, yes. Like we are just saying that like input is standard and it is in a proper structured format. Data to be used from, procurement, anywhere application no, no, no supply chain management because uh, we need to provide from where we are taking the input data so we are still uh, pending with this uh, detailed as is process steps but we'll come back to that and we have given the process also and the partial initiatives if applicable like in case if we are having any other applications are getting developed in parallel with our automation or like any application is under some enhancements uh, where we are using those applications uh, in our automation so that we need to mention here in case like because uh, in case if any new development or any modification occur in that particular process or on, on top of any uh, applications where we are uh, automating uh, that we need to assess the impact as well like how change uh, it is going to be and in scope for rpa uh, it's simple like uh, all the po numbers we on supply chain management application and what is the out scope for the rpa there is nothing to mention as of now out scope but in case um, 
if something is not in in scope everything is considered to be out scope like uh, generally in out scope uh, there is very less chances that we are going to mention um, because uh, let us suppose uh, we are saying that like uh, the p1 numbers whatever is there on supply chain management uh, is are uh, in scope then anything else other than that like uh, will be an out scope like because um, other than what we have in in scope like sun and moon is also an out scope so it's not necessary to have a specific but in case if we have any specific uh, let us suppose uh, for some p1 numbers only like with the starting series of 40 uh, i have a scope then we will be mentioning that the p1 numbers other than uh, starting with 40 are out scope so in case if we have any specific condition to ignore any input then in that case we are going to uh, mention that in the out scope generally uh, it's very rare condition that we are uh, having this uh, out scope so here i'm just simply saying that not applicable it is not applicable actually and um, so when it comes to the exception handling like there are two types of exceptions one is business rule exception and the other is a system exception when it comes to the business rule exceptions these are noun exceptions or we can say uh, based on the uh, data which we are providing for the process is not correct or incorrect those we call it as a business rule exceptions and the system exceptions are something that like any unexpected exception or application behavioral exception we call under that as a system exceptions so we need to provide a non exception list as also here and um, and other observations and these are something common like it is not that much required to take care and in case if we have a video recording for a particular process we can give it that here or like in case if we have any procedures or like similar to the best practices or something we can give it here and in case if we have some uh, any mappings or something like similar to this uh, mapping we can provide that uh, file path here and in case if something is there we will be providing it here so there are uh, two things pending for us uh, as of now like uh, one is like to provide the detailed steps uh, as is as is detailed steps we need to provide it in an excel and at the same time we need to provide the exception list so in the next uh, video we are going to look uh, look into this like how we can prepare the exception list and uh, to be process of uh, flows uh, but what i think is like uh, let us uh, do one thing like let us uh, cover the non exception list and uh, then we'll go for uh, uh, this detailed steps in the next session because uh, detailed uh, steps will take a lot of time whereas like uh, exceptions we have very limited so let me just uh, create an excel why we are putting in an excel file for the exceptions is like there is a ch high chances that going further we might like depends on the process we will be having a lot of exceptions also in, because in this process we have only two pro exceptions we are considering that known as a known exceptions but in other scenarios like we will be having uh, uh, there might be a chance that we will have will have multiple uh, exceptions also exception um serial number exception and um, next steps take should be which should be taken by the robot so here in this case we are just considering only two p1 number not found in procurement anywhere application 
and um, the other is isn't name or state is not found in isn't territory what is that file name let me see the file isn't territory spreadsheet and for this in both the scenarios robot should send notification email to purchase team in both the scenarios it is same so this is our uh, exception list so for two like in case if we have more we'll be going to attach the excel but for two uh, let us put this in um, excel itself let me go for this uh, probably in the documentation this presentation is much more important because we are going to submit these things for the to the client for review isn't okay yeah so um, let me just yeah so uh yeah with this video we covered almost the pdd uh only one uh pending scenario is there like pending item is there which is where we need to provide a uh, um the detailed uh as is process steps so that like the developer will be aware like how actually uh the business is doing as of now and what he needs to automate and uh, each and every screen and which option needs to be picked up so this is how uh, that that will give a more uh, picture but apart from that we are almost done with the pdd and in the next video we are going to see how we are going to capture uh uh, detailed as is process uh, for like each step and um, thanks for watching uh, and please like share uh, subscribe to skill rpa channel